Okay, let's get started here on uh, how to flash the Sparky board. Uh, or if you ever get stuck with any other boards, you can do this via bootloader mode. Um, you'll be able to put your firmware on and not have to worry about configuration tools. Okay, so one of the things you need to do on a Windows machine is look in the device manager uh, and find where the Sparky is living uh, when it's installed. So you plug in your USB cable and watch for where it populates. Right around here where it says COM uh, under ports, it's showing that uh, ST Microelectronics board, which is the Sparky board, that's the processor on there, the STM processor, um, it lives on COM4. So if we go into Clean Flight Configuration Tool, and you don't have Auto Connect automatically there, what, what, what you can do is go to the firmware flasher all right and from the drop down menu you select what board you're going to be working with and there's 1.2.0 okay and we're not in bootloader mode and we want to do a full erase and you click flash firmware actually we're going to load the firmware online okay so there's loaded and we click flash firmware oh and look at there it says failed to open serial port so what are you going to do now right that's the question you see these chips they have built-in bootloaders and you can access them by shorting two pins and pushing firmware directly up with STM firmware yep STM microelectronics has their own software that lets you push up binary directly to the chip and it's called a bootloader mode so let's close out of this nonsense here that doesn't work with our Sparky and let's unplug our Sparky board. All right. And this time when we plug it in, we're going to have it be loaded as a USB device, but it's going to be in DFU mode. So I'm going to hold a pair of tweezers on the two little bootloader pins on the Sparky board. I'm just bridging them across and I'm going to plug in the USB cable. And now we're going to see something different. Oh, I guess I didn't have them shorted. Let's try that again. We're going to unplug it. And I'm going to do the same thing again. There we are. Down here under USB controllers, you can see it populated STM device in DFU mode. That's what we're looking for. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on the internet and we're going to find the binary file. Now they used to be inside the source folders, but they removed the binaries and they're now attached to, let's click this, to the new releases. So here's the shortcut. It's GitHub clean flight clean flight releases all right so we're gonna come down here we're gonna find our sparky board okay and we'll click right click we can save as or just click it and let it download so there's our hex file so I'll say show in folder and I'll right click and copy it or cut it that's fine we'll cut it I'm working off a trackpad here and I'm going to come over here to my documents and we'll make a new folder. Sparky Hex 3. Because I've done this a couple times. That's when I show you from scratch how you do it. So we'll right click, we'll paste it in there. Okay. And we'll take out this uh, extra stuff. I want to say clean flight underscore sparky dot hex now we're going to come over to my desktop where I've downloaded some tools now these tools come from STM microelectronics however the latest version they have 3.0.4 will not work I'll uh, upload this this is a 3.0.2 version of DFS DFUSE and uh, I'll make that available for you to download because it will not convert the hex file to a DFU file so if you open up DFUSE and you click on the bin file, we're going to launch these two programs, the DFU file manager 
And it's going to give you a dialog. It says, I want to create a DFU from a, a hex, a S19, or a bin file. Click OK. Now it's going to want you to go find that hex file that we just downloaded from Clean Flight. So we come over here and you click on this particular button. And we're going to go to the folder that we just created, which is the th Clean Flight 3. Oh, having a heck of a time here. And it's saying nothing. Oh, that's the wrong folder. Hmm. There they are. Sparky hex 3. And it's not showing the binary, the hex file, because it's looking for an S19 file. Click on hex, and then there's the one that we just brought down from the, the um, look at the date, you can see, that we just brought down from Clean Flight Git page, and we're going to click generate. Now in that same folder, we're going to do it again, but we're going to click it create it as a DFU file. So I'm going to get rid of this .hex extension. We'll hit enter and it says success. We generated it. Alright, so we're done with the DFU file manager. And note, this is 3.0.2. The .4 does not work. It'll give you an error right there. So now we're going to run the demo. DFSU demo. Now if this box is empty, that means you don't have any devices in DFU mode. All right, come down here. We're going to click Choose, and we're going to navigate to the uh, folder that we just converted to Sparky Hex 3. Okay, and there it is, the DFU folder. Okay, and it says we've loaded the file correctly into the program. Now we want to upgrade the board. Click Upgrade. And it's going to give you a warning. Continue, however. You click yes. And it's targeting the files. It's upgrading the chip directly via the USB cable. No FTDI cable or anything. So we're going to click quit. All right. I'm going to close this out. And we're going to come over here. We're going to launch Clean Flight Configurator. But before that, I want to disconnect real quick. We're going to come over to our USB cable and I'm going to eject the bootloader. Okay, so now it's safe to remove. I'll unplug the USB cable. I'll plug it back in. We'll look in our file manager, find out where it lives now. Should live under a COM. There it is, COM4. And Sparky sees it, COM4. We click connect. And now we have Sparky with the latest firmware running in the configuration software. So that's it. Hope that's helpful. Uh, it took me a long time to figure that out. But I hope that helps anyone else that was in the same position I was. So until next time, we'll see you later.